What's up guys? Welcome back to Embroidery Hub. My name is Carl and I'm your new host. Don't worry, Andrew is still here and he is with the new Rakoma Prince channel. The link will be in the description below. Are you guys ready for today's episode? I hope you are, cause I am. In today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to make one of the hottest trending embroidery techniques in the market today. We're gonna be making 3D puff variegated thread weave design on a six panel hat. I'm gonna be going over the entire embroidery process from beginning to end and digitizing process along the way. We're also gonna talk about the pitfalls of what it takes to embroider on a six panel hat and how to avoid some of them. However, before we get started, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to the channel so that you can stay up to date with the newest videos that are coming out. Also, don't forget to click that little bell icon. All right, now let's go digitize. Follow me. Hey, I don't hear anybody coming. All right guys, let's make the magic happen. I'm gonna be using Chroma Lux, but you can use any version. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to open the backdrop tool to import our letter, which is gonna be the R. So I have it right here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the backdrop tool. You're gonna to see it gets highlighted here, it turns on. I'm gonna click on the R and open it. I'm gonna use my mouse to zoom out. Uh, I have my scale here set to inches. So if I right click on the scale, I put the mouse right up there, right click on the scale, I'm gonna set it to inches. I want this R to be between two inches to two and a half inches. Anywhere there is fine. So using my little arrow, I'm gonna scale this down, but I wanna make sure that it's the R itself, not this actual square that goes down to two. So here is my zero mark. I have one inch and two, so I wanna be between these two ones because from here to here and here to there, those are two inches. So I still have to go down some. So I'm gonna be right under this line here and that line right there. So here we go. I'm gonna grab it and we're gonna scale. At any time during this procedure, you can rescale or check the density. So I'm gonna make it right about two and a quarter, so we're right at two and a half. So once I have it scaled, I can use my ruler to go ahead and just mark at the top and mark at the bottom. We should be right at 2.5, 2.45, that's fine. I'm gonna leave it just like that, I'm happy. Now, I'm gonna zoom in using the scroll wheel and I'm gonna start setting up some guidelines. I like working with guides. They kind of make everything nice and easy. So I'm gonna go up here to the top ruler and drag down a guideline just so that it touches the top. I'm gonna go back to the top again, drag another one, and I'm just outlining the whole process. I'm gonna do another one for the bottom of the R. Again, I'm gonna do another one for the bottom of the R. So even if on this design right here, notice that this, the thickness of this R is a little bit thinner than that one. So by setting up your guidelines, you kind of avoid any type of mistake that could happen. I will then drag from the left side of the screen over and set my margin this way. Now again, these are just guides to kind of get me started on my way so I know around where I'm going. I'm gonna drag this one again. Now, I'm, I wanna have this serif. This serif is a little bit long, so I'm gonna shorten it down. And on this part of the R, I'm not too crazy about this, so I am gonna create a serif here. So I want that serif to be about an eighth, which is uh, a quarter inch is 0.25. And if I go here, sorry, if I go here to here, I should be right at 0.12. So 0.17 is not half of 25, so I'm gonna, Go ahead and grab my ruler tool and just bring that in just a little bit. So you can bring it in just a touch. So now we're gonna go to the ruler and measure that again and we have about 0.16, that's fine right there. So that's gonna set up my serif right for this edge. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for this little bit right here. So I'm gonna again drag my ruler, place it right about here and I can use the ruler while I still have it and just measure that. That's 0.17. Here I have 0.17, perfect, beautiful. All right, now here comes the cool part. This is a very simple design. All it, we're gonna use is the satin stitch and the manual stitch. We're gonna use satin and manual. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my satin. Now, anytime you do puff embroidery, you want to use 
end caps on the embroidery uh, because what that does is it's going to cut the edges of the foam so that the edges of the foam doesn't stick out. So if you're embroidering something and you have a piece of foam and you're only covering the top of it, if you don't cover these edges, then you're gonna have a little piece of foam that's sticking out and you won't be able to cut it. So by making a cap, it's going to cut the foam and allow um, you to, when you tear it off, it's not gonna have any foam exposed. So we're gonna do that after. All right, at this point, I have my scale already down and I'm gonna start doing the parts of the R. The last thing I'm gonna do is run a tack down stitch so that the foam gets tacked down to the hat and also create my end caps, but I'll do that after. We're kind of working our way reverse. We're working from front to back. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our satin stitch that's gonna match right here. So I'm gonna zoom into that area real close. And what I wanna see is I wanna see right here, I wanna make this as straight as possible. So I'm gonna start with my satin stitch. I'm gonna start right at this corner. Now I want the stitches to go up and down, not left to right. So depending on how I start, that's how it's gonna get laid out. So once I start up and down right here, notice the little line follows to this side here. Now I can come down, keep it nice and straight. And once I right click, that's my satin stitch. Now underneath, there is an underlay that I will remove at the end. At the end, I'm gonna remove all the underlay, but right now, this is what our satin stitch looks like, and we're gonna change it to a density of 30. And always click Apply. So now we have our density of 30. Now, if I use my selection tool, I can see that there's a midpoint right here. I'm going to drag this down right to the midpoint, and now I'm gonna make the weave pattern. So this is where the manual stitch comes in. So this is, we're gonna do it one by one as if we were actually sewing it. So I'm gonna do about 16. I'm gonna start here, just do one, two, and just space them out about the width of the little crosshair. Two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So right there, that's good. Fifteen is fine. So now I can just right click and there's my stitch. Okay. Now we're going to, this is already selected. We are going to right click and we are going to duplicate it. I'm gonna put it right up here, but it's, it's in the wrong orientation. So once I select it, I'm gonna flip it, mirror it. So I'm gonna use the icon up here and actually flip it. And now it's exactly where I want it to be. Notice it matches these stitches exactly. It's right where I want it. So that is the one stitch we need to do. From moving forward, it's all gonna be cut and paste. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select everything and I'm gonna group it together so that it all moves at the same time. Now that it's still selected, I'm gonna right click and I'm going to duplicate it. Now, wherever you click, it's gonna drop it right on the screen and I want it to slightly overlap this edge because I don't want you to be able to see this. So you want it, you should be just see the little V part. So if I put it right on this little corner right there, notice it covers exactly where I want and we can repeat that all the time. So I'm gonna go right on that little corner and just start my weave pattern. And we're making like fish scales. Each one is gonna overlap the other just a little bit. Okay, and we can move over. There we go, there we go, just like that. So we're almost, this is it. We're almost there. So now if I zoom out and I go to the 3D view, this is what the pattern is gonna look like, okay? Now, um, we want to overlap certain areas of the R so that they look a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just zoom out just a little bit. And I think this is long enough to set up my Ceres but we're gonna do this last. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this part of the R, then this part, then have the serifs come in on the bottom, and then this part on the top. So this is all I have to do. I'm gonna take this, 
and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to put one right here. Now that this one is here, I go ahead and select the whole thing and now I can rotate it and have it follow the edge of the art just like that. So now I'm going to put it right there. So notice I have it just coming up a little bit inside here. I don't need it to come up so high, but just a little bit. And I'm going to remove some of these on the bottom. So I can go here and just delete some of those. I think if I do one more, perfect. I'm going to right click, I'm going to paste again. So now I have another one. I'm just going to drag it. And now I'm going to make uh, this long part here. So I'm going to take that, turn it vertical. And I'm going to have this go just into it just a little bit. I do want slight overlap. Okay, I'm going to right click, paste again. And I have the top. And this one I'm going to rotate again. Keep it vertical. And make the bottom part. And again, I'm going to overlap it just a little bit right down the middle. Beautiful. And I'm going to remove some of these. I don't need so many. So if I click right here, I can just delete, delete, delete and delete. That's perfect. I'm going to right click. I'm going to paste one more time. And now I can take this one and drag it on the bottom side. And so that's going to be one of my serifs. And again, I want to delete this part here. And because they're all grouped, they're all going to come out the same. So I'm going to just delete, delete, delete until I get to that little mark right there. And notice they fit perfectly right where I want it to fit. So that bottom part is done. I'm going to right click paste again and I'm going to drag this one and do the same thing. So I'm going to set that uh, little margin. It was about 16 from here to there. So that's about the same. And I'm going to click here and just delete the edges off of this one. One, two, three. I think it's about three that we did. And there's the bottom. So we have our bottom. We have this. We have that. And it's all in the same, the order that we want. We want this to be on top of this. We want this to be on top of that part. However, we want this to go below. So we're going to click on the top part. Actually, we're going to select all of this. And we're going to right click. And I want to change the order and bring it forward. Once I bring it forward, notice it's on top of that. So the easy part is done. Now we're going to work on this circle right here, which is not that hard. It's super easy. All you have to do is we're going to take one of these. We're going to right click and duplicate it. And now we're just going to start pasting them over and over and changing the angle. So let me get a little zoom in. Beautiful. And I'm going to keep going on the center line. And every time I duplicate it right here, it's going to give me the right amount of overlap. So I'm going to keep going. Just like that, just until I start getting into the curve. Right now I'm getting into the curve. So now I'm going to start turning these uh, things around. So I'm going to place one, select it, and just slightly rotate it. Just like that. I'm going to select it again. Right click. Duplicate. Again, I'm going to hit the same part. And I can do a couple. And what I'll do is I'll just move them out of the way one at a time so that it doesn't take so much time. Here we go. I'm going to rotate this one a little bit and I'm going to reposition it just following the center. Click on that one, put it right there. Notice wherever the mouse is, is this exact center where I want it to be placed. Click on this one, put it right in the middle and I'm going to rotate it. Okay, now we have some type of a curve forming. And once you zoom out, you're going to notice that it looks really good. Again, we're going to go back in and we're going to just keep going, work our way down the curve. Now, we don't have to do too many of these. We can just keep duplicating and we're going to paste a couple more. We're going to get a little bit more of the curve going. And then once we have that all done, we will copy a couple of them and then move it down just a little bit more. So here we go. I'm just getting a nice curve going. Bring that down a little bit. Take this. And 
and then bring this to the center right there. And now I've got my curve going really nice. Okay, so now let me select a couple of these. Okay, and I'm gonna right click and duplicate that. And once I click here, I have that whole big piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. And so you see, it starts to get easier once you start building up a couple more. Whoops, let me not do that. I'm gonna undo that for a second. I'm gonna reselect all of these. And now I can rotate the whole thing. So again, we're gonna do the same thing. Notice how our curve is almost finished. And if you don't like any part of it, you can rotate it and reposition. And we can get that curve going just right. Now that we've finished the R and we have everything already set up, now we're gonna put the end caps on the tips of the R so that it cuts the foam. In order to do that, we're just gonna do a regular satin stitch. So we're gonna go here for the satin stitch and I'm gonna do it off to the side, for example. So I'm gonna go off to the side and I'm just gonna make it about, and if you look at the little ruler, it's gonna tell you how big it is. So a quarter inch is 0.25. I'm gonna go about half of that so that'd be 0.12 uh, and a half. So let's just go point, let's go 14. We're gonna go 0.14. So that's gonna set up my satin stitch to go horizontally, not vertically. This is really important that you do this first. And then I'm gonna go over here and make it about the same. And again, another 0.14 so that we get it nice and parallel. I'm gonna left click and there it is. I also wanna change that color. So I'm gonna left click on the yellow so that it changes that color to yellow. So I'm gonna left click, boom. So now I have yellow just so I can see a little bit better. Now I'm gonna zoom into this. All right. And I'm gonna take this and drag it over right on top of this area here. So notice I'm leaving, I'm just letting just this a little bit under it and I want it to tuck in just a hair under. So once I have this one set up, it's just a matter of duplicating it. So now that I like this position, I'm going to, wait a minute, before I do that, I'm gonna put that on hold for a second. I want to group all of this first. And what that's gonna do is it will allow me to save all this in one motion. So I'm gonna select everything. And you notice how all of it is right here. I'm just gonna put that into one group. I'm gonna go ahead and group it. So now this is a lot cleaner and I can move this around and change it. Um, I'm gonna grab this one now and I'm gonna go ahead and put it back where I wanted it. Again, let's zoom in to get the position correct. So using my command key or control key, I can use it and use the arrows to just gently nudge it pixel by pixel and that's exactly where I want it. All right, so that's perfect. I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate. Now I'm gonna go down to the bottom and I'm gonna go ahead and put one right here. I'm gonna go ahead and put one right there, here, and also right here. Now, instead of me going along and aligning everything, I'm just gonna select them one at a time. So I'm gonna pick my arrow tool, my selection tool, and go ahead and with the command or control key, depending on what system, I'm gonna select each of these. And using my alignment key, I'm gonna use the horizontal center alignment. I click that and they're all aligned. Now, while I'm still holding that control or command key, I can move the arrows left and right just a little bit to get this to move just a hair to get it into the right position. Now, once I have the height like I want it, I can then go ahead and select them individually 
and go ahead and align them a little bit closer by using the command or control key and the arrows. Okay, perfect. So now I have all my little tips in, in a row. I'm going to select all of them. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit just so that I can select all of them using the command or control key. Select that one, that one, that one, and that one. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna group all those. So now that is one group. Okay, perfect. Now, the final thing uh, I'm going to, while I still have this, I'm going to right click and send it to the back because I want the blue to go forward. So I'm gonna send it to all the way to the back, boom. Now, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a tack down stitch. This will hold the foam in place while we're waiting so you don't have to tape it or pin it. So I'm gonna use my run stitch and I'm just gonna start and draw an R. And once I get to the curve, I'm gonna hit my control or command key and you'll notice it'll make the curve for me. And that will create the shape of an R and right click and that's it. So now this is going to tack down the foam before it finishes or before it starts. And again, while I still have that selected, I'm gonna take that and move it all the way to the back. I'm gonna make the order and bring it all the way to the back. So now if you look over here, the first thing that's gonna happen is gonna do my tack down stitch. The second thing it's gonna do is do the little caps for the puff. And finally, it's going to do the R. Now remember, the reason we took off all the underlay from the stitches is so that it doesn't compress the foam and make it lose its uh, puffiness. All right, so we're gonna run through it one more time. We're gonna go ahead and make the auto run and I'm gonna let it play. And this is exactly how it's gonna happen. We're gonna do that, that, and then it's gonna do the R's. So we can speed that up a little bit, just make it go real fast. And I'm really happy with that, that's great. Now, if I do have these bridges here, I can cut those later or I can do it now. Let me just go ahead and take care of that now. I'm gonna go ahead and go to my group. I can hide the R so I can see these. I can click on it, I can right click. And I am going to, <clears throat> that's actually, let me pick this one, there we go. I can right click on it, ungroup it. And now on this particular one right here, I'm gonna go back to my selection tool. On this one, I'm gonna trim that little piece. So once I hit apply, you'll notice that that little junction is gone, which is fine. So now I can go ahead and select them again. I'm gonna select that one. Con uh, command, control, select, select, select. Right click and I'm going to put the order backwards. I'm just gonna go back one. So now when I bring this back, notice we still have all of these here. So while it's still selected, I'm going to right click. Actually, I'm gonna click them again and just bring them into one group and that just cleans things up a little bit. There we go. Now it's really easy. We have a group for that, for this. The, notice the order changed. All we have to do is take this, drag it, and then we put it back to where it was. There we go. So now we have our run stitch, our tips, and our R. There you go, guys. Let's go do it. If you've never tried to digitize a 3D puff design before, don't worry. We have past episodes on Embroider Hub that show you how to do just that. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description below. Now that I showed you how to digitize, it's super important to run tests before you go to the final product. You don't wanna mess up on the real garment, so you're always gonna run tests. These are some examples that I made. This one right here is just a regular straight color, that way you didn't have to waste any of the variegated thread. And this one, you can clearly see the weave pattern when using a variegated thread. Now, it's important that the density or the space between the different colors be a little bit larger when you're doing the uh, stitches. What do I mean by that? Here you can see that between the white, the gray, and the black, there was a little bit of separation on the thread. That's why every time it does part of the weave, it breaks to a different color. On this hat, even though it is a variegated thread, the colors matched too evenly and because they were so monochromatic, you really can't appreciate the weave between one segment and another. 
On this one, you can clearly see the different colors. So depending on what final effect you're looking for, always do tests and not all variegated threads are created equal. Now we're gonna go over the supplies you're gonna need to get the job done. We're gonna need our cap ring, six panel hat, variegated thread, thread clippers, 3D puff, and a heat gun or a lighter just in case you need to clean things up. And now the moment you've been waiting for, we're gonna put our cap on the cap driver. So I'm gonna do this. I am going to invert my sweatband. I like to make it go all the way down to the end. Now, because we are using a structured cap, we don't necessarily need to use stabilizer. Certain things that you can run into when you're not using stabilizer is needle breaks, loss of registration, and just a lot of headache. Oh, no! So it's really important to hoop your hat correctly. The stabilizer also protects the hat seams from getting stuck onto the little wings of the embroidery machine, which I'll show you in just a second. There we go. So this, you want the cap ring to be right along the bill and the bill to stop right at the bill stop. So this is a properly hooped hat and it's ready to go. If you want to learn more about the different types of hats and how to embroider on them, we actually have past videos on Embroidery Hub which show the five most popular cap styles for you to embroider on. I'll leave a link to the video in the cards above and in the description below so you can check it out. Now it's time to import our design. Once I put the USB in, I'm gonna go ahead and select the design. Select design. I'm going to scroll up a little bit until I find the design that I want, which is the R design. I'm going to hit R design. The little picture shows up. Now I'm going to go ahead and select it. It's going to ask me, do I want to save it to the machine? Why? Yes, sir. Save to machine. And we're going to go ahead and save it. Now that we've saved it, we're going to hit the machine button. And there is my R. I'm going to go ahead and click on it and hit select. And now our design has been selected. Just in case, I am going to select my hoop again, just in case it wasn't in the right one, but I'm gonna hit the cap hoop, select, hit yes, and you're gonna notice the machine will articulate to make sure everything resets to zero. It's always a good idea to do this. Now, once I have my design selected, my hoop selected, I'm gonna go ahead and pick my colors. In this design, it's just one color, the variegated color which on this machine I have it on number nine. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick number nine for the little uh, 3D puff ends. And then I'm gonna use that for the actual R. And then we're all done. Now we have all our colors selected. We're gonna go ahead and go uh, hit the save button. Now that we're done in putting the design and selecting the colors, we're gonna go ahead and take the hat and put it on the cap driver. When attaching the cap to the cap driver, you don't wanna push it into the machine, but you wanna squeeze it into place, just like that. If you push too hard instead of squeezing, you risk moving the pentagraph, which will throw the image off of center. Therefore, you'd have to remove the cap, let it articulate again by reselecting the hoop, and then putting the cap back in. So remember to squeeze and not to push. Now we're gonna go ahead and trace our image and get it ready for embroidery. But before we do that, we have to put it in setup mode. We're gonna to go to setup mode, say yes, and now the trace button is available. We're gonna hit trace, and we're gonna do the trace area first. The machine always moves to needle one to do the trace. The trace area gives you an overall idea of where the image is. Now I can go ahead and do the trace design. Trace design is going to show you exactly where the needle is gonna go. All right, now that we're done tracing, the only thing left to do is to put the foam on the hat and hit the start button. All right, for this design, I'm gonna be floating it, which means I'm just gonna be holding it in place. The tack down stitch is gonna hold it in place for me once it starts and then I can let it go and we'll be all right. And by the way, we are using three millimeter foam. Now, once I hit start, we're on our way. You guys ready? Here we go.
it's alive! Now it's time to clean it up. The only thing left to do is to cut this little bridge gap right here and the other end. And now we're gonna peel the foam. Now the foam acts just like tearaway. So it's just a matter of gently just peeling it right off. Now if your digitizing was done nicely, you should have very little left over and not much to do or trim. And there it is my friends, all done. If you have any loose ends or any pieces of foam that are sticking out, this is the time that you would use the lighter or the heat gun to get everything nice and tight. We're gonna take it off of the hoop. Look at that. All right guys, what do you think? I think it looks great. All right guys, that's a wrap. Thank you for welcoming me into your home. If you need further advice on future projects, be sure to join our Embroidery and Printing Business Help Facebook groups. Also, be sure to follow Recoma on Instagram and TikTok for more entertaining and informative videos. And let us know in the comments if there are any other topics you'd like to see in future episodes of Embroidery Hub. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Auf Wiedersehen. Hasta la próxima. Now, Epita. All right, now I gotta get out of here. Let me take that elevator down. Oh,